The main message that I want to get out there to, to all the lads and everyone that, that's watching is that depression and feeling down, I think a lot of it for us men comes from our self-esteem. We've got low self-esteem. And the reason why you'll have low self-esteem if you're out there drinking and doing drugs and you're, and you're arguing with your missus and not spending time with your kids is because you know you're being a prick. But you think, this is just the way it is and this is the way I am. That's bullshit, man. It don't. So it's not about the drink or drugs. So that's the big that's the big part of what we're doing. So it's not about your drinking, it's about your thinking. It's your thinking that's a problem. When you get into the you get into a sober, there's a different life, it's a different way of living. Like being sober is a superpower. Like it's a superpower. I swear, swear to you, it's a superpower. It feels like it at the moment. It is, honestly, it's a superpower. Hello and welcome to another episode of Menace to Sobriety with your host with the most, me, Daniel O'Reilly, a.k.a. Dapper Laughs, a proper fridge freezer, lemon squeezer, Ebenezer, Doja Pleaser, Mastercard Visa, Achu, Sneezer, a proper leaning tower of Pisa, a Julius Caesar, woman pleaser, a proper crowd pleaser and a proper naughty geezer. That's right. <laughs> that was good. Uh, yeah, so here we are. Uh, for those of you that have just tuned in, uh, this is my podcast all about sobriety, menace to sobriety, me being the menace, sobriety being my new way of life. Uh, 64 days sober. This is my this is my um, my app here. Sober. I don't know what it's called. Hold on, let me get it up for you in case you want to. Well, I am sober, it's called 64 days. So uh, very proud of that. Very proud of that. And it's inspired me. I've been on this journey, recently diagnosed with ADHD. Um struggling with my mental health over the last few years in regards to anxiety um and a lot of it you know uh, anxiety depression you know overthinking big bouts of like blowouts and stuff like that and a lot of it all down to uh excessive drinking and session and everything like that so got myself nice and clean and now i want to share that share that um journey with you and share the advice and tips for anyone out there that's struggling along the same sort of road i was with interesting people and now to introduce you with today's interesting person a gentleman that i met through um my uh mates group men and their emotions on facebook for a mutual friend in there um this 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 is going to start us on a journey where we're talking to just you know the normal average everyday people like yourselves out there that are going through this but that are also really inspiring with uh, with their journeys i wanted to get people um like this on so you could relate to them out there and you can see that it's not just all these uh fancy uh, z listers like myself that um spout all this bollocks um that um real down to earth sort of the earth people are going through the same journey and dealing with it this is ross mack dj promoter event organizer and all-round legend how are you oh good mate thank you i feel a bit left out the other, other many uh, titles, titles you've got <laughs> that's great just go for it throw them out there. <laughs> <laughs> it takes years of practice to do that um so listen welcome man hopefully we're going to spit some knowledge here and share our journeys first of all let me start uh, by asking you, how, how how long sober are you, Ross? So yeah, I don't I don't always talk about my sobriety because for me it's about the quality of it. Right. But obviously it's important to stay to talk about it. And I, I'm eight years and about three months. Eight years and three months. That's yeah. mental. You you were telling me before where you picked up your badges. Let's go into that quickly. Yeah. Right? So um, I'm, I'm part of a twelve step fellowship. So we pick up chips. So every thirty days, sixty days, so I should have bought you a sixty day chip. Uh, 90 days, you get chips, which you know, put on the key rings and stuff. So wow. I picked up my seven year chip in Ibiza. That's a mad um, place to go to get your chip, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not sure if I. How many years was that? That was seven. Seven years. It, I would have been Ibiza seven years and back on it. Yeah. Now go on. But I've done that. I've done them Ibiza where you, where you go missing for three days. Yeah. So it's not about that anymore. But I picked up my seven year chip in Ibiza, yeah. Ocean Beach on my seven year. Uh, mm. Me and my wife and a friend of mine runs a party there. Wow. Um, and then my eight year, I picked up in Vegas. I was DJing it in Vegas this Mate, year. Mate, you love to just give you the, like, that is hardcore. Where am I going to get my eight year chip? Vegas. Yeah. Vegas. It worked out like that. It wasn't like I planned it. it just, I was going to say. On the day. And when they I can't be giving you that advice in the AA courses and that, like, eight years, go Vegas, just tempt yourself and well, see if you can survive it. I don't know, like, for me, like, uh, so when I drunk and used, I wasn't free because I was home locked up like a creature. So oh, now okay. I'm free, I want to go out and see the world. So I wouldn't recommend to anyone who's 60 days clean to go to Vegas, but mm. I recommend to someone with a bit of sobriety, go out there and see the world. Because I love that. You can do anything you want to do when you get clean. I love that. I love that. What was the reason for it? I'll tell you what, before we get into that, Ross, yeah. tell me a little bit about yourself, what you do, who you are, just so the viewers at home can get a feeling for you. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I've am got an events company called I'm Event Solutions. So I've, I've DJed in clubs since I was 13. Uh, 
I played it all over the world. I used to do the big um, channel, about channel four, yeah, yeah. Brit Awards. I've, you know, I've done, done some really cool stuff. I run events. I run events at Ocean Beach. Mm. Uh, I played this year. I played in. I, uh, I played in Vegas. I played in Uganda this year. My wow. has got a charity, so I've worked through some work out there. Uh, so I played all over the world. I've been really fortunate, and um, I've got an events company. Well, you said that, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I DJ. We run events since I was thirteen in proper clubs when I was sixteen years old. You know, we used to go out when we were sixteen. So I was playing in big clubs when I was sixteen. Mm. And then I stopped using it at 34. So you're like a, you're on the front line of yeah. drink and drugs, and and yeah. you're and I guess that must give you a real um, real eye opener to to everything. Also, we, you mentioned a couple of times when when we were talking outside that you're quite obsessive. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I so I obsess about everything. So um, do you think that there's a lot of lads out there that do this that don't realise they do this? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I, I like so we we talk about the illness gets worse as you get older. So I'm not as obsessive now as I was eight years ago. But I like, so I try and channel that obsession into recovery, helping people, mm. being clean and sober. But like, so if I buy, if I like a t-shirt, I try it and I go, I love that. I get, I get all three colours. Mm. So I love it. And then, and then like trainers on the same. So I just, I, I just obsess about everything. If I see a top, I go, oh, I want to get that as well. So I just obsess, obsess, obsess. So like I've done loads of things to stop drinking. Like I, I never run before. So I thought, right, I'll start running and, um, I run a couple of miles. You know what it's like. You run a couple of miles, then I run six miles, then I run marathons, and I'm doing triathlons. Yeah. I've done the London triathlon. This sounds like me, fight. man. Like, I'm the same. Yeah. Like now I'm boxing. I want to fight yeah. KSI or Jake Paul or fuck. I want to get on the big shows. Yeah. Like when I'm when I'm you know when I like when a new project like this podcast, I'm on it. Like I yeah. want to do it. That, like yeah, projects. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. very. I'm very much. Have you got ADHD? Yes, yeah, so I got diagnosed with ADHD this year as well, and it's not something like it took. I was probably clean for about five years before I really spoke about this stuff openly. Yeah. So I would say to anyone who's new, just 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 focus on your recovery. You know, what I mean, just I would just, just be mindful, man. And it took me a long time to talk about this stuff. And I got tested when I was younger. Then when I was, um, I got tested last year. Yeah. And I knew, like, you know, I meet you. I know you can just tell, you know, ticking all the boxes. So, mm. but I'm not one for medication. Uh, no, I yeah. Hate myself enough, so but I'm just aware of it. I understand who I am, and like when I so I was expelled from my infant school when I was five. So I was like kicking teachers, and I just realised that was just part of the ADHD as a kid. Mm. And I and I'd be sat in a classroom, and I just walk out, and I do it now. Like I'm sat here somewhere, if I'm doing some work, and I go, I just want to have a one. Like my brain just goes. Yeah, I'm the mean? same, mate. Yeah, window. And I want to be over there. And if I'm over there, I want to mm. be over here. Yeah, you know I mean, and I want to be you. I, I don't want to be. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. always trying to. So now I just try and be present. Mm. My wife will laugh because she goes, you're all over the place. But I try and be present today and in the moment. Yeah, I'm finding, um, I'm considering medication for the ADHD just because it can get, it gets quite intense for me in the evening, like when I've run out of things to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm up, I'm up super early, like four o'clock in the morning doing my fitness and stuff. And um, yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty busy up until about midday. Um, and then I'll get on a school run and stuff like that and come back. And then when it's time to relax with the kids and the girls, I'm kind of like, man, like, I'm still here, bruv. Like, I find it difficult to sit down and relax. And that can be quite frustrating for my missus. And I think that, um, I think ADHD for me is, is definitely a blessing, like, because I can focus on this, I can hyper focus on the things that I'm interested in and I can be interested in multiple things. But if I ain't interested in it, it's like, for instance, a big part of my job now is, sorry to go on a tangent, but it's Sorry. just the ADHD. I'm learning so much about it. But uh, the the big part of my, my, my career and my life now is uh, films, right? So making films. We've got uh, a big slate of films that we're making next year. And uh, I'm going to be producing them or playing parts in them and stuff like that. And the, the core of that is always the script. And sitting down and reading a script for me is fucking so hard. It's so difficult. Um, and you look at things like that and my mind just close it straight. Well, I'll get excited big. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, nah. Nah, yeah. So like too much. my good pal Mazza, Jason Mazza, uh, <coughs> producer, we work together on a lot of stuff and he's got this project that he's been, he's been saying to me, sent me the script. He's like, read the script, read the script. And for the last three weeks, I'm like, I'm reading it today. I'm doing it today. And then it'd be like, tomorrow I'm definitely doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But I'll sit down and I'll go, right, I'm going to do this for you. I open it. I look at it and I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> And then I come off it, but I managed to read it. It's only 40 pages, like, but I managed to do it the other day. But um, yeah, so just trying to work on that focus. I'm, I might try the medication, see if it works. But I, I think for you, so for instance, like for you, so 60 days, by the way, is fucking amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. It does. The number the number does seem big to me. Sorry, Matt, I've lost, I've lost. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, fucking hell. Just about but, to get um, me 65th chip in fucking, I don't know, somewhere full of cocaine by the sounds of things. I've got to Columbia to get me 65th chip. No, but, you, um, <laughs> but, but for you, like, so 30 days in, you're getting your feelings back, right? Mm. So you feel different. So so where you are now in these 60 days, like, 
you know, like I'm not saying about, but it's really new. So you're gonna feel fidgety. You're gonna feel like it took me a couple of years to thaw out. So mm. I would just say to you, or anyone that's in that situation, like maybe wait. A million percent weight. There's so many more things, and maybe we'll get to that. There's so many more things that you can be doing for your mind, and you know, there's meditation, there's cold water stuff. And I saw you doing the cold, cold water, water yeah. stuff, and the Buddhist chanting that you were doing. Mm. I'm a geezer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a geezer. I'm a geezer. Uh, that might be some form of like chanting. I've done Buddhist chanting. It's Is that, even though I'm saying I'm a geezer, do you think I am secretly chanting? Definitely, I've done it, and um, all that stuff. And there's like we can get to. There's loads of things that you can do before. There's, so there was a study around uh, antidepressants and um, they uh, they done a study and they, they give antidepressants to people and uh, within, there was a 30% remission of people that take antidepressants that got well. 30%. That's quite high, right? Mm. That's quite high. So you think 30%, because you'd think it'd be lower than that, but people taking this medication, 30% of them got well on it. So you think 30%, that's quite a high number. Well, the people were taking um, a placebo, and they were taking that, which is obviously nothing, but obviously your mind thinks you're taking something, and the uprising that was 30%. So the medication was 31, but placebo was 30. So, so it's the same. So it's all mental. So yeah. it's mental. And I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not saying that that stuff, that you shouldn't take that stuff, mm. and I'm not, I'm not advising it, but all I'm saying is, I think there's other ways of looking yeah, at things I mean, rather that, than doing that, because that's, that's 30, 31% that's the same. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm firm belief, like, one thing I will say, and like, I, I'm struggling with my, with my wife, Shelley, at the moment, she doesn't seem to, she, I mean, she, I think she gets it, but she doesn't seem to realise how much clarity I've got now uh, that I'm sober, like, you know, how much, how painfully fucking obvious everything is and how much space, that's the best way I can describe it, uh, being sober now, is how much space there is in my life to feel and also how clear my thoughts are and that I've got a lot of regrets as, uh, as, as I'm sure everyone that goes sober does, a lot of regrets, a lot of things that I've got to think about and, you know, you think back and you're like, oh, I was fucked then and I did this and I done that and I wish I hadn't missed guilt, that. Guilt, shame and remorse. Your guilt, yeah. is that what it's called? Shame and remorse. But we, so with, with the 12 steps, and we'll, we'll hopefully we'll touch on that as well, is we do... Yeah, get into it now. We yeah. do a thing. So with the steps, um, we do a thing called called a step four. So like you would sit down, like we would sit down, we'd go through something and you and, I, and you would say, oh, um, fucking I've got off my nut and... Fucking, I got caught wanking a porn or do you know what I mean, or, or some really, yeah. like really, really that, 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 you know, and you tell that to me, I go, yeah, Dan, I've done that. And then you go, oh, fucking hell. And then, so then, and then you would talk about something and we would just talk about it and we would, and, um, it's like you, you, you know, open like, your heart out yeah, to someone. Like, like, like losing someone. Like, I know, I don't want to, I know you lost your dad. Yeah. You know, and I don't have any experience around that. So I'm not, but we could, there's stuff you can do around that and there, there's amenities you can do around that. And it's, it's about freeing yourself from that. Do you know, yeah. and when you're at night and when you're in bed, it's about freeing yourself from that pain that we put ourselves through. Cause I've done stuff that I, that I thought I'd never forgive myself for and I've been forgiven today. And, it, and, and I'll just try and live a free man. Yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah. We, we, we talk about um, we talk about all the, all all the things that we use on you know family members people that we ate do you know what I mean like falling out with geese on the pub so we ride it all down and we go through it and we look at that stuff and it's mm. a really freeing process. Yeah, I think the pain that I think there's so many benefits to sobriety, but the only downside for me is fucking realization of a few things that you know looking back on situations where i thought um i thought why is everyone being a dick or why is this person why is he being a twat well, and then looking back now i'm thinking fuck me i was a mess yeah like i was I'm, I'm bad anyway in regards to to um rejection and criticism um just because of what's going on in my career and stuff like that. i'm ultra sensitive and i think part of the adhd is is actually being super uh, un, unable to control your emotions and i'm super sensitive um when you mix that with the heavy come downs I was having and hangovers, if you if someone caught me on on a hangover or come down, or if I was in a group and one of my mates said something silly, I'd leave the fucking group and I'd start yeah. asking questioning people's friendships yeah. and shit like that. And you look back on it now and I think, fuck me, what a mess I was. But there must be so many lads out there right now that are that are living either drunk or on a come down or hungover, and the, you know they, they they think that's sober, didn't you? That's that's the thing that I'm starting to realise now is that I wasn't an alcoholic in in regards to drinking and and using. I wasn't alcohol dependent, but I was pretty fucked my whole life because it's your thinking, not your drinking. That's the problem, right? So it's not so. And I, and I spoke to you about it before, like so. It's not about the drink or drugs. So that's the big that's the big part of what we're doing. So it's not about your drinking. It's about your thinking. It's your thinking that's the problem. Like the problem is Dan. The problem is Ross. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like. Like I, I, I cast myself as an alcoholic, but I, I don't drink alcoholic. And the alcoholic is going to park bench, but it's, it's my thinking. My thinking's fucked up. So when you're in them group chats and 
And the problem is before, when you're drinking and using, you don't give a shit. So if you fall out of someone, you, you like, don't really give a fuck. You don't give a fuck. But when now you're clean and sober, you're feeling that. Do you know what I mean? You're six days in and you're feeling it. And that's, that's where you're at. It's like, like the feelings are coming back. Cool, yeah, because you're feeling it. So before, you just go, fuck that geezer and get, I'm going to get on it. And then, and, and that, but now it's different because you're feeling it. That's, that's where yeah. you're at. I mean, I, mean? I, had to, I, I knew it was coming for me, the sobriety. I knew it was coming because I, I had a crack at it before and... And um, I was feeling bad about it. And um, one of my biggest regrets, I think that I'm always gonna, and I'll share it with you now, just cause we're talking, I feel like I can share with you as well. Cause, cause we're sort of getting into it, but it's my wedding. My wedding was just recently. I've recently got married, like only a matter of months ago, maybe four or five months ago. And everything was a blur to me. The lead up to the wedding, um, just cause of stress and work and everything. But the actual wedding day for me started off fantastic. It was great. And then it gets up to a certain point in the day and I don't really remember much else. Now, I know there's probably a lot of men and women out there that um, go through that on their wedding days, but it's like when it got dark and it was just party time, I don't really remember much from that. But the thing that breaks my heart is, you know, I look at the pictures and I see like my baby girls running around in their dresses and I don't remember spending any time with them on the day. And um, that's one of the things that's really s sort of sunk deep into me. Like, did everyone there know that I was fucked? And yeah, and you know, did, was everyone looking around like, you know, fucking hell, this is his wedding day, look at the state of him. And that plays deep Maybe. in my mind. Yeah. But, but so there's loads of things that like, so what well, first thing is you can't change that. Yeah. No matter what we do, unless you've got a time machine, we can't change that. Um, so you just have to, the consequences of your using. So when you think about drinking and using, for, going further, think about that day, think about your kids running around. But the best thing you can do for, because I don't know your wife, but you know, I obviously see the videos and stuff yeah. like that, and I know how you talk about her and stuff like. Um, best thing you can do for your wife is stay clean and sober. Yeah, and do and do what you're doing. Yeah, you know, and uh, and your kids. That's the you know, like we we do in a men's pro uh, process, and we talk about that in recovery. So the step four that we spoke about, where you share the really deepest, darkest stuff, where you need to uh, after that you go out and make amends. Mm. And uh, I had to go and make amends to people that I, I fucking hated, to be honest with you. And and I continue to do that because I, I ain't perfect. So like mm. I'm not come on here saying like I ain't floated through like a spiritual guru, but I can be a see you next Tuesday. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Ask my missus, she'll tell you. You know, but yeah. it's about trying to be better. And I can't change the past. Yeah. And I can't and, and I spend my life so I'm always worrying about the past, worrying about upsetting that person, my wedding, etc. Or I'm thinking about the future. I'm yeah. always rushing ahead. Yeah. You know I mean, and I need to be today in this in this podcast present. Yeah. And that's what I try and do. So the best thing you can do for Shelley and your kids is to stay sober. Yeah, I mean, I I, I I'm I, I'm blessed in regards to having, I feel blessed in regards to having the strength to admit, like, uh, like to, to st I mean, it took a long time to get to a point where I was like, you know, I, I was drinking and, and getting off me nuts some nights. And like I said before, I wasn't using or alcohol or drug dependent every day. It'd be like a, yeah. if it, there was an event or a Thursday and a Friday. It's got to be every day. No, yeah. If, if there was daily a, to use. Yeah. Them. And if there was a Thursday, Friday night and then a Saturday night session, then I was fucked up for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just starting to feel better and then getting into it. But I look back over the last 10 years and although it was just part of our culture and it is part of our culture, all the lads out there yeah. that are doing it now, um, that was hard for my missus. And I think that, to come out of that cycle, but also to come out of that cycle going, man, I've been a dick or I'm fucking this up. This is really fucking bad. So I'm proud of myself to be able to hold my hands up. But but the truth of it is, what, 64 days, over 10 years with her, 64 days. So she's probably like sitting there going, right, well, yeah, right, let's see. The Done proof is before. in the fucking yeah. pudding. Yeah, we've been here before. Yeah. So right now I'm not celebrating too much. I'm like, I'm very, very aware that, you know, something – you don't know what's around the corner. Something bad could happen in your life and you're like, do you know what? Fuck this. But I don't want to be that guy. You don't need to. Yeah. I, I, I've had, um, you know, I've had some really sad stuff. I, I, you know, I don't want to go too much into it without making it too depressing. But, you know, I lost a baby a couple of years ago. So, uh, that's all right. And, uh, um, my, you know, we've we really struggled to get pregnant and, and, and we're really struggling now and we've done a lot of stuff around that and we, and, and I'll never forget when my, my wife rung me and, uh, well, that's yeah, it's, it's sad. Yeah. But, but. And did you think about things? using then? No. I don't, I don't, because I know that ain't a solution. I don't yeah. think about using it. Um, a friend of mine died last year. He was like my sponsor, died 106 days. You know, I've had some really, so getting clean, to be clear to anyone, like bad stuff's going to happen. Right? Yeah. It's bad stuff's going to happen. Then it's about how we deal with that. Mm. So I can do, I can go on a three day bender, but I've still got a big dealing with what, what, you know, yeah. the outcome. And that doesn't, that, that's not my solution anymore. Mm. Like I said, when I say it's not about the drink and drugs, it's about us as, as a person, you know, it's about me. Yeah. You know, my head ain't right, you know, like the ADHD, you know, like my head is wide different and, I, and I'm aware of who I am mm. today. So like for me, like before I got clean, like I, I was like, like, I got my glasses that I can see, but it's not great. Do you know what I mean? And when I got clean, like you said about it earlier, like, like the world just come clear. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's it, that. It's clear. This is who I am. Yeah. This is who I've been, and I need to take responsibility. Yeah, for and it. I, I've been a bit of a cunt. Yeah, yeah. You know oh, I mean? Look, listen, man. Every single person, especially the lads out there, I'm going to say it, but every just because I can relate to the boys, every single person that's watching this podcast right now, whether they're watching it just, just, just to listen, and they don't have uh, a drink, or they don't have an unhealthy relationship with drink or drugs, or the ones that do, every person out there has got regrets and skeletons in the closet and stuff that they fucking wish they never done, um, and unfortunately, coming sober is going to bring up but I think to myself it's weird for me because I've done it a few times it's like week one week two you're like you're coming out of it and week three you're like oh this feels good week yeah. four it's like it's clear week five you know you kind of you everything becomes clearer and better and it's like you're grasping onto it holding on to it going this is so good I just don't want to I don't want to fuck it up it's good um and I think like I've done well on my own um but I think maybe next year I might look at the 12 steps. I might look at just brushing up on knowledge and keep doing this, keep talking about it to keep myself yeah. straight. So like, um, the thing is as well, is it's early, like, I, I, and I've been doing this a little while, so I didn't walk in and understand all this stuff about myself. It took me quite a few years. Like I said, it took me five years before I really spoke openly about it and I don't talk loads. And I just want to say like, I think you've got such a big platform. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Thank and you. with the group as well, and the, the few things I want to talk about the group is like, um, so the first thing is that I would say, uh, 90% of the guys in there, it's drink or drugs. Yeah, it's so, it's it's very difficult for me to moderate that group now. And by the way, we're talking about men and their emotions on Facebook. It's a Facebook, uh, it's, it's, amazing, a, yeah. it's a Facebook group that I started while I was still drinking. Um, I was in, uh, I just had my wedding, had the honeymoon, come back and then went away with the kids. And I couldn't sit still on this holiday. And my inbox, just because I was talking about how I was feeling emotionally, uh, my ups and downs, I, up. I, now I know that a lot of my depression, anxiety and problems and overthinking and not being able to control my thought process was based around my drinking, either on the way up, on the way down or the drug use or whatever. I didn't know that at the time, but I created this group, Men and Their Emotions on Facebook and men can post anonymously. And on the back end, I go through it with my moderators. We've got about 15 moderators and we pick the stories uh, that people are asking for advice or just to connect. And I think the beautiful thing about the group is when something goes through, even if someone's looking at it and they're never going to post anything or write, they know they ain't alone. Yeah. And even if no one has got an issue or if they've got an old issue that they've remedied, they can put their they can put their two pence in. But the person that's talking about it can stay anonymous and get some attention yeah. and some love. But the problem that I've had with it is I've had a few messages from people going, oh, mate, it's just people off there not on coke or, you know, a lot of people don't understand. Like people going, it's just people going, oh, I got off me nut again. I can't stop doing, doing coke and I spent all my wages and I can't buy Christmas presents for my kids. And other people just go, well, stop fucking doing drugs and stop doing that. But I don't want the group to be all about that. So I'm trying to vary it up. But it's shocking how much it is. It's like, yeah. like you said, 90% of it is lads battling with drink and drugs. And that's why I started this. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think the first thing you said there is that, that you, cause I, when you go to meetings and we talk about all the fuck, all fucked up shit that we do and we're using, you go, oh, fuck it, it weren't just me. Do you know what I mean? Like using in the dark, like sniffing on my own, up like hearing through letter, like, you know, all the mm. weird stuff that you do. Do you know what I mean? Thinking that you're going to get the police come for the door and all that stuff that you do, you think, fucking, I'm not alone because you think it's only you, ain't it? Yeah. And with that group as well, like, I don't comment on stuff that I've got no experience around. So, you know, for people to, I, I, it's not my place to say because I'm just giving my opinion. I don't think that's yeah. valid. But when it's about the drink of drugs, I do try and get in there and say stuff. And and the first thing I ask and ask a guy, now that, are you drinking and using? Because people talk about mental health and they ask me all the time, like, did you have mental health problems before? Well, yeah, but I didn't realize it, right? So from five, I'm getting expelled from my own schools. I didn't realize that. It was only when I got clean that I looked back and mm. that kind of stuff so but you've got to have a because what i couldn't understand is like i, I, I can like like you i can achieve some really cool stuff but when it comes to drink or drugs i was powerless i couldn't understand yeah. that so i think well i can do this do this and do that but when it's drink or drugs i'm powerless and i think with that group is like um i think the point is just people understand that they're not alone yeah you know what i mean and, and i would say to people well, look if you've got mental health, the first thing you just do is stop drinking and using you know i'd say to anyone like do 60 do 90 days do three months proper and to see where you're at. Yeah, because I'll be honest with you, I was, uh, mate, I was in such a bad way. Like, for once in my life, I've said this before, for once in my life, my social media, what you see on my social media, genuinely reflects what I'm like at home. Whereas this this time last year, on social media, I was like cracking jokes, being funny. I was a great dad and I was with my partner and my missus was laughing. But behind that, turn that off, I was yeah. fucking down. I was depressed. I was like either hung over or getting on the smash. Me and the missus were arguing. You know, I wasn't spending, you know, my camera was coming out when I was spending time. But when the camera was going down, I was giving them the iPad. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. but now it matches what it looks like. And 
it's all their masks though. You're wearing different masks. You just yeah. you want everyone to see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We're all wear masks. I mean, like if we're with certain, we're like we're all, all fucking mm. geese, aren't we? We're all like yeah. the boys, and like and it, we just wear masks. And I think time. yeah. And one the main message that I want to get the main message that I want to get out there to to all the lads and everyone that that's watching is that depression and feeling down and worthless and shit. I think a lot of it for us men comes from our self-esteem, if we've got low self-esteem. And the reason why you'll have low self-esteem if you're out there drinking and doing drugs and you're and you're arguing with your missus and not spending time with your kids is because you know you're being a prick. Yeah. You know you are. But you think, this is just the way it is and this is the way I am and this is the way. And do you know what? All of that guilt and that shame and the arguments and the hassle, it's just what comes with life. That's bullshit, man. It don't. If... if if you got them both in your hand and you had a fucking bag of coke and a beer there and then you had your fucking marriage, your kids or your job and everything you loved there and you, someone put a gun to you and said fucking pick or not even a fucking gun and said pick, you'd pick your family. But because it's not that obvious to you, yeah. you just fucking... When you're using it, yeah, you're, way, you're, it? You're, you're, and you're like, yes, I'm all right. I'm here. I'm with you. Yeah, but yeah. fucking chill out. I'm trying to enjoy myself. Yeah. Look, I work hard. Stop so, a yeah, stop it. I work hard. So I've got to fucking enjoy myself. I deserve this. Why the fuck do you deserve that? You know what? You deserve to make yourself feel like shit. And this is... I'm saying, and even as I'm saying this inside my mind, there is still something inside my mind going, shut up, man. That's fun. It yeah. still is telling me yeah. that. I'm, it's, I've still got it. That's how Don't fucking... the liar. That's how it's fucking, that's how, that's how powerful that is. And, you know, I've got mates of mine now. It's Christmas right now when we're recording this. Next week is Christmas. And I'll tell you what, every couple of days I'm like, oh, mate, they're in the pub. But so what happens is you, is you do your first sober Christmas, do your first sober weddings, first sober holiday. You just become normal. Yeah. Like it just becomes normal. Like, it is early for me, isn't it? Yeah, and like, and I'm not taking anything away from you. I'm not taking anything away. 64 days is amazing. When you can't get two or three days clean, yeah, that's amazing. But you just, there's loads of stuff that you can do to try and take away the the edginess. You yeah, know what I mean? like like even we're chatting now, like two ADH people were like, you know what I mean? Like it's like mm. you just need to calm and breathe. And like my wife would be watching this game. These are the things you don't do. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. sort of you, like you're good at talking about it, but it's just stuff that I've learned. Yeah, you know what I mean, and like with the ADHD, it's just about um, you know, like I do meditation mm. and I've like I've, I've tried, I've, I've done loads of things and they're. I do a morning routine mm. as well. So I get up and, and, I, and I talk to the universe a lot. I do affirmations and stuff like that. And it just brings a real calmness in my life. Yeah. And, um, you know, Stephen Bartlett. Yeah, yeah. Um, he talks about doing a diary at night. And um, Yeah, I do do that, actually. Yeah. I, I Well, I do. What I do is I mix, I mix them up. I, I, I empty my head on paper. So it's all my worries, everything, yeah. you know, right. if something, if it... What yeah, what certainly what I'm I'm doing, and I'd love to promote this to men because it's so wanky that men just don't want to do it. But yeah. being in, being in tune with your well being and your 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 head, right? For me, one of the, my biggest struggles in life, 100, percent is negative yeah. think thought patterns yeah. or ne negative loop cycles. Oh fucking hell, what if that's going to happen? Oh fucking hell, is she pissed off about that? Or why did they say that? What, yeah. what is that? And then it's like da, 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 da. And next thing you know, you're fucking gone and you're in there and you're like, it's just like meh, 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 and you've lost a fucking hour or you, or it, or it's your day's yeah. fucked. Yeah. But what I've started doing now through like, like you're saying, through calmness <coughs> is like trying to, trying to cut that, cut that out. And a big way for me to do it is to go, right, what am I fucking pissed off about today, man? What is it? All right, so I've got to do that and I haven't done that. Or this person hasn't paid me or blah, 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 blah. Or I haven't, blah, 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 write it all down. And you're like, all right, it's on there. You know what I mean? And then you can do the same things with positive things as well, can't you? Your gratitudes and that. So we, um, so like what you said, what, what we do in the car, we do a thing called inventory. So I'd go home at night and I would say, well, what happens today? Uh, fuck, like, I don't know, like, like Dapper called me a cunt on Facebook. And that, that would fester with me all day. Do you know what I mean? And I'll mm. be in bed at night and I'll be, all I could think about is Dapper called me. So yeah, be, I'm like that. I see him, next time I see Dapper, be difficult with you because you're quite quick witted. But for me, but well, I would say, well, next time I see Dapper, what am I going to say? I'm going to say what well, I'll say this. And if he says that, I'll say that. And I'll be arguing in my head. Right? <laughs> and when yeah. he says this, and it's always like I say the most horrible thing about him. And, and while that's going on, your missus is trying to talk to you, your kids are trying to play to you, play with you. And, oh, yeah. oh, so, so it's that talk about obsessive nature. So, so I'm obsessing about it. So not, I don't do it so much anymore, but that's how my brain used to work when I'm, because I think, well, you know, and then he said something, and then he, his missus has laughed, well, she's mugging me off. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because my perception of everything is twisted. You might, and then, so I would just go to bed obsessing about it. So now I'd get to bed and I'd write, you know, I had a crossword with Dan, you know, and I, what I try and do now is I just try and take accountability for my own actions, which you, which you spoke about earlier, is, mm. is about, you know, it's your fault, it's his fault, it's missus fault. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to draw myself, well, actually, I, you know, we're grown men, like I need to be an adult and be a grown yeah. up. And, um, and and we write down this stuff, you know, my day. And it's really nice to review your day when you've had a really good day. Not, you know, not at a fallout with Dan. You know, had a really nice day and do your gratitude list. What am I grateful yeah. for? 
you know, like grateful for doing mm. a podcast today, you know, grateful for being clean and sober. You know, I work for a festival as well. Mm. So, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm grateful to still be doing what I love and I'm clean and sober. I do, I do mm. all the same things that I used to do. I just don't take drugs for three days. Yeah. I think, I think that's a, that, a big, a big thing for lads out there. And it's easy for me to say, but because things are going all right for me, but, but I have been there fucking hard, mate. Like I lost everything. Uh, fucking ended up living, you know, in, in, at my in-laws in the spare box room. Do you know what I mean? With a pregnant missus, and I had no money. I, I've been there. I know what it's like when you're on your ass. It's fucking horrible. Yeah. Um, I mean, I started on my ass and then got loads, and then lost it all, and now I'm sort of working my way back up. And I understand how lads out there can sort of sit there and they can think to themselves, and this is the big one. Well, fucking, what's the point, man? Like, I got no money. Oh, look, my missus has left me or I can't see my fucking kids, mate. What else have I got in this getting fucked up because nothing's going right? Well, unfortunately, nothing really is going to continue to go right for you um, that in that mindset. It just it just ain't. I'm sorry. And it don't matter how, who says it to me. Loads of people, when I talk to them about mindset, uh, and it's so difficult for me to say it without coming across patronising, when I go, well, fucking look at what I've achieved. Yeah. And, the only, the, and, and the only way, and I don't mean that by my money, my car, my house, yeah, what I mean is when I say look at what I've achieved by being able to grasp my mentality, by being able to twist it to the point where I've cut out all of my fucking coping mechanisms that were negative and I've brought in new coping me mechanisms. I've been self-aware enough to be able to see who I'm hurting and what's hurting them. And I know that if I get up in the morning and I do the hardest thing possible, which for me is going and sparring or boxing, before anyone else wakes up, by the time everyone wakes up, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna think. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. I'm gonna think. Fucking, how good am I? Look at what I've just fucking done. Yeah. And then I start my day going. Oh, I'm the fucking boy, mate. And that, honestly, by about eight o'clock, you can see on my social media, I'm like, fucking, who wants it, mate? Who wants it? I'm the fucking boy. I'm funny. I'm sexy. I'm being a good dad. I'm sober. I ain't got a hangover. Do you know what I mean? I got a McLaren. Suck me dick. <laughs> Sorry, got a bit carried away there. But that's mindset. That's how I get. Do you know what I mean? But it's that, um, and again, it's when you get sober, you you start mixing with people that are in that different mindset. Like I, I go to a lot of seminars and I speak to people. So I, I talk to people every day about this stuff. Mm. Every single day, I try either try and help someone or someone's helping me. And it's a two way street. And exactly like that, when you get into the you get into a sober, it's different life. It's a different way of living. Like being sober is a superpower. Like it's a superpower. I swear, swear to you, it's a superpower. It feels like it at the moment. It is honestly, it's a superpower because you just like you don't you just see yourself through you. Well, are. you just go positive, yeah. You, and your progression positive. is, yeah, yeah. Your your progression is because sorry to cut you because you can right. carry on, but you're exciting me here because I love the I love the thought that I've got a superpower because it's weird doing bugle used to make me think I had a fucking yeah. superpower. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you're just chatting shit it's not about superpower when you were like that. Yeah, like that's what I always, I always yeah. think. Yeah, I'll have a line, and then the next thing you're yeah. telling people about fight. Yeah, you're, you're talking about fights you ain't never had. Do you know what I mean? In year eight and bollocks and wanking yourself silly till four in the morning. But no, the sobriety as a superpower. I understand from my perspective when you say that what that feels like. To, I've had two coffees. Can you tell? <laughs> what what it what it feels like to me is like there's no there's no downside to it at the moment. It's like today's good. Oh, wait, and that's getting better. This is getting better. And there's no fucking hangover where I've got to fucking start again after an argument and yeah. pull myself back up to this is good. This is good. At the moment, it's just going... Yeah, it gets better as well. Mm. And it's like, um, like you only have to give up one thing. Or like we think, oh, like, I have to give up a drink. Like, what, poor me, poor me. Like, like understanding I'm an addict and who I am is the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, find out about the ADHD. So, because I, I know who I am today. I spent my life people going, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't, know. I don't fucking know. And how do I expect you to know what's wrong with me when I don't know myself? Because I don't, mm. I, I don't know who I am. Do you know what I mean? I don't know who I am. I don't know, I don't know what I like. And you get clean, and it's like you have to give up one thing, just drinking drugs. And that's it. And then you know, everything just goes, mm. you know, your life. You know, like my relationships are better. You know, my family. Yeah. You know, really got really go slow. Yeah, really you actually care about, about people. Yeah. Because you're just selfish and self-centered. So it's selfish when you think. me. You don't realize that. But when you see it, when you see you see it in other people, and, and you think, you know, that, that was me. Mm. Yeah, like, me. I, 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 like, it's crazy how much time I spent away from my family and that, like, you know, every, like now, especially coming up to Christmas, if so, like, if we were having this podcast, if I was drinking, I'd be like, look, do you, do you want to go for a drink after? Or I'd be like, who's in London? I'd be texting out who's in London who's and I wouldn't be back till 11 12 o'clock tonight probably off my nut yeah and I'll be doing that twice a week so on the rest of the time hung over yeah it's it's crazy the thing is like um is what's sad is like you know like we met today like we'd go I'll oh, show a bit of gear after like it wouldn't be a problem just to whack out you know what I mean if we weren't sober I'd just go yeah I've got a bit of gear bang it's on do you know what I mean we're out and we're doing all, all, all the things that we shouldn't be doing and that, that that's just that that's that it's weird isn't mm. it it's like you you can get 
you can get drugs delivered quicker than you can a pizza. Yeah. You know, my friends have got these postcode guys. You send them there like 12 minutes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, normally they're Albanians. Man. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they're yeah, there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Pub grub, but fuck me, it's quick. Yeah. But um, and That's scary, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I, I mean, like, what was I going to say? Yeah. So, listen, I'm just going to put it out there and I'm going to say this to any lads that are watching this. If, if, if like me, you can't, if you, if you can't, not think about co if like say for instance if you're having one or two beers or three beers if you're around certain people and you get that excitement and you want to get some gear in and you don't know why or you think to yourself i don't want to but then you have one or two beers and then you do you've got a problem yeah you've got a fucking problem yeah. you've got an issue and do you know what brilliant man wicked you've got an issue man do you know why that's a good thing i'll tell you why it's a good thing because now you know that it's a problem you can fucking let go of it yeah. do you know what i mean like i've yeah. got like now that i know the, like I know for a fact, I'm not even going to lie, because this is what I tried to do before. I know for a fact that, because last time it came up to Christmas and I was like, do you know what? I'm getting bored, man. I've done six months. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm getting bored. It's Christmas. I've proved to myself that I don't have to drink. Yeah. You know? It's I, really I, common though. Yeah, I haven't got a fucking issue, man. Because look, I haven't drank for six months. So I'm going to come back over Christmas. I'm coming out of retirement. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. got my fucking stag do coming up. I'm just going to have two or three beers, maybe get a bit tipsy a couple of times a week. What's the harm? Within two weeks, I was back on the gear. Yeah occasionally do you know yeah. what i mean um and then we were having the same arguments then i was out and that's, stuff like that. that's the same so that's the the lie that that a lot of people they they they, they want to they have six months they have 30 days six days they, they think i want to have a drink again but you're always going to be that same person because what happens you might go and have a beer and you might think fucking i cracked it I had a beer tonight go home and it's that next week you said within two weeks you're using yeah you know? i mean i know i'll be using straight away but people do they they say oh i'm all right and you, you cling to that one time remember that one time you went out and had one beer do you remember that time you don't remember the other nine million times yeah. you went out and got fucked up you just think oh yeah well i've done it that time and you you use some lie i mean you cling to that and it's bullshit yeah i mean like another thing and this is going to be really painful for people to hear and i mean i'm being pretty brutally honest here and it's it might divide some of the audience but if like me you like you've got a beautiful wife, a nice kids, a house. And um, if like me, you thought to yourself, like I did, everything's going perfect here. The only thing that will fuck this up for me is drinking drugs. Because the only time I'm a fucking twat is when I drink or I do drugs. I'm either going to fucking get in a fight with someone, get nicked or drive my car drunk or not come home till four in the morning. She thinks I'm cheating or whatever, right? If you're thinking to yourself, you know, that is the only thing that can fuck my life up right now, and you're still doing it, then you're being out of order. Well, the, so the thing is, like, um, so we get this quite a lot. So I do, I do a lot of uh, twelve step stuff. So we do a lot of like, like, I'd say like group therapy. Do you know what I mean? I go every week, and then everyone, I know people when we talk and stuff like that. And the one thing is, someone will come in, and I say, "All right, mate, are you getting on? You all right? Well, not really. My life's to shit. My wife's left me. My kids hate me. I've got no money. I feel like killing myself." If I don't kill myself, I'm probably going to die anyway. I say, oh, fair enough, mate. I've got a solution for you. Because I've been there. I don't understand where you go. And these people just... You, you, and they just go. They disappear. And like, like you said there, like, they've got all these things going wrong. And I'm saying to you, sweet Dan, I've got a solution for you. Come and I can help you. Mm. And they just go. And do you know what? And do you know what that is? That's addiction, mate. That's how powerful... That is, that's why I'll say this. Uh, that's how powerful drink and drug use is. That... Everything can be going wrong in your fucking life and you still turn to it yeah. and you still can't see that's what it is. And what I'll say is I think that I'm lucky. I mean, like I say, touch wood, it's only 64 days that the second time I've tried to go sober, I'm lucky that I've got out because I reckon that if if I kept re, if I kept going back, like maybe in a couple of years, there'd be a time where I couldn't get out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think that I think that people get to a certain point where, you know, that you start where you're using, you're drinking, you're doing drugs and you don't want to stop because it's all right. Do you know what I mean? But you're in that. You? But you're in there and then there may come a point where you want to stop, but you can't. So if you've got that freedom now, let me go on to some of the other stuff. Yeah. So phenom phenomenal craving, what's that? Yeah, I just want to cut back on one thing that you yeah, said then. On. Sorry, mate. Um, so yeah, you spoke about getting into that place. So so a uh, friend of mine runs a, a non-profit. They, they do um, stuff around suicide awareness. So right. I'm a qualified... Um, I've, I've done a course with them so it talks about it, uh, so it's something we can, talk, we can put in the group it's about it's like a mental health course for people around suicide awareness so where you spoke to about getting to that place where the next thing for you is is, is, is like I might commit suicide yeah um, it's not commit suicide so it's, it's, you shouldn't say that word it's not commit suicide but um, take death by suicide basically right. so men under 50 is the biggest killer is, is death is death by suicide the biggest killer and it's not because more men try to kill themselves than women it's about 50 it's about the same but men are more extreme than women and we do more extreme things and that's why more men die 
than women. It's really fucking Well, so sad. women survive their attempts. Yeah, because women are all, you know, they'll often, you know, maybe they'll take like some tablets and stuff like that, whereas guys all, you know, like hang themselves, you know. Or jump off a couple of my friends yeah. hanged themselves this year. Yeah, oh jump, you know what I mean? So so we're, we're more extreme and that's why more men, but it's it's, it's, it's a real thing is happening. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's sad. And, um, you know, again, it's just... It's saying that people ain't talking about. Yeah. And I think, listen, I, I don't want to do the same old stuff that everyone does. Oh, you should talk to someone. I mean, you should talk, but, you know, it's okay. It, it, and it is okay to talk and da da da. I want to be a little bit more real yeah. and like, and a little bit more fucking full on about this because I know, I, like, I know for a fact, right? I'm happy as Larry right now. I'm happy things are going well. Through my sobriety, good things are happening to me. Just even booking this space, coming up with this concept, I met the producer, John. John, introduced me to the guys at GB News and now I'm back on TV so thank you very much John I'm going to be a regular and that's yeah. that, that's the kind of good karma that's coming coming, coming yeah. my way from sobriety but I know you know the lights are shining my children are beautiful everything happy is, and everyone's healthy and everything like that but I know full well that if something was to happen to me and I started drinking and using again uh, and then something was I was some mate, imagine if I'd done something stupid and I got caught doing something stupid or say, for instance, if I had a, that one last argument that she couldn't take and she actually decided to leave me and then she took the kids. Right. And then I couldn't see the kids. And imagine how quickly all of these these little dominoes could knock yeah. just from me getting back on the drink and the yeah. packet. Right. To the point where I go, there's nothing left. I'm fucking and I can see that in my head that there's nothing left. And this is a message to any lads out there that are still using and that things are going wrong. You just don't know what's around the corner that could tip you over the edge. You just don't. And that's real talk, man. And and the thing is as well, is like, is bad stuff's going to happen. Yeah. That bad day, you know, and we're going to have bad days. Like people have, a, it's all right to have a bad day. You know, people, people, you know, they get, they get butterflies and oh, I've got crippling anxiety. You're just having a bad day sometimes. Yeah, but, you know with, I mean? but with sobriety, you can handle it. Yeah, and it's just like tomorrow's another day, and like if I'm having a bad morning, I'll just restart the day and go, cool, boom, let's just start this day again. Because that stuff's going to happen. It's about how I deal with it and how mm. I act with it. I can't control what you do, but I can control how I do and what I deal yeah. with it. And that's it. Because addiction's about, uh, it's about ego. It's about, I, I know everything, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm one of them geezers. You know, I, I'll tell you how it is. I'm one of them blokes. Do you know what I mean? I fucking know everything. And then I got clean and realized, actually, I don't know anything. And that's fine. Do you know what mm. I mean? I'm just continually learning. And you know, I'm just new to this stuff. And that's fine. Mm. Whereas I, I thought I knew everything. Yeah. I do think like so, sober, sober, sober lads, sober men are weird, man. Like sober people are weird because they're nice. They're genuine, nice yeah. people. And it's weird to come across like lads that you don't think, oh, you're a bit of a twat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like sober people, they're like, look, take me take me or leave me as I am. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I don't want to be better than you. I'm not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, my ears are open. My mouth shut for a little bit. You know what I mean? Where when you meet people that are on the piss, they're like, yeah, this is what I do. And yeah. this is, this is me. And like, you're like, you're like me. We're like each other. I'm like, mm. <laughs> I, so I, I was a knobhead when I was <laughs> fucking pissed up, man. Go on. Well, I, I, so I, um, so my, my using more, so I talk about clubs and I talk about that stuff. Yeah. My using is more, Away, do you know I mean? I'm a bit of a lighter, my, my, I'm a bit of a, we call it like the lone wolf. That's more my thing. So I'd never really be out. But like now, like it was your birthday, like I'd go out at eight and I'd stay till 10 and I'd go. Like I wouldn't have to be there at 12 and everyone's going, I'm so proud of you and all that sort of thing. They're off there. Like I get it all the time and they're going, like, grab me, you no, know, grab me. Oh, mate, what you do is amazing. And I'm like, cool, man, I'm bang and I'm done. Yeah. That's it, I'm done. Don't mm. need to go out all night. I'm mm. out at my pals next Thursday. Mm. We're all out, we'll have a bit of dinner. And, and I will yeah, but don't don't you think, don't you think, like, when you're sober, you leave when you feel comfortable about yeah. leaving. But when you're drunk and off your nut, you stay even though you don't want to fucking be yeah. there. And you end up you end up using with people you don't even fucking like. Do you know what yeah. I mean? When everyone's gone home and you're like, I'm you, and, and, and you're doing things and you're doing things against your will with people you don't even fucking want to be with. Yeah, that's so true. So vulnerable. Um, um, right, let's get into some of these other bits because we're running a bit tight on time. What is the phenomenon phenomenon of craving? That really stuck out for me. Phenomenon of craving. So is um, phenomenon of craving is when I start, when I put one in me, it wakes up the beast. You know, you know the right, beast. Yeah, yeah. Mine's called the sesh gremlin. Yeah. yeah, the sesh gremlin, right? Yeah. So the beast. So like normally you have the good and the bad on your shoulder, and the, and when you're going to do something, the 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 good guys going, Dan, this ain't a good idea. And you just like fuck it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you and you got and you got the, the bad guy going fuck him, do you know what I mean? Like and then and it so full on a craving is when you when you take that first drink or drug, it wakes up the beast inside you. And once you start, you can't stop. And for me, like I'm allergic to to drink, and because once I start, I just go the beast wakes up. You know, you have that first drink. So that's why we say 
uh, one's two million, a thousand's not enough. Mm. A phenomenon equation. But for me, that phenomenon starts before mm. I pick up. It's an I, illness, isn't it? Yeah, it's an illness. Yeah, but before I, before I pick up, I go, I get twitchy. Do you get that? You get mm. dingy. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna anxiety. I'm getting dingy, and and I ain't even used, and my body's just going, and I'd sometimes I'd throw up, or you know we need to go to the toilet, or that sort of thing, and that and that and that, and then you, you do that first one, and you do the first one, and you have it, we call it ease and comfort. I mean that first line, you just go, oh yeah. You know, it's all right. So ease and comfort, we talk about that. And after that, you're just chasing it, chasing it, chasing it. Yeah. I've, man, that's so fucking poignant when you say it like that. And uh, I think like, oh man, it's making me feel sick just even thinking about it. I mean, like, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, uh, why, why, let me just ask, why, yeah. why is it? And I'll bet loads of lads out there will be able to relate to this. Like, why do we want to get fucked up? What is that? What is that? Because with me, like, if I was having a good week, yeah. I'd be like, the weekend's coming. I'm going to yeah. get smashed. And yeah. think, look at the words that we use. Yeah. Smashed, fucked, wankered. Yeah. Like, like it's like literally, I want to beat the shit out of myself. Yeah. Like, what, why, what is that self-destructiveness in us? Because that, to me, was fun. And look, if I'd had a bad week, do you know what? I want to get smashed. Yeah. I want to get fucked. So just, no matter what week it was... Yeah. At the end of the week, I was treating myself by fucking beating the granny out of myself. Yeah. Is that not insanity? It is insanity. Isn't it? And you said that if the day ends in why I'm using, yeah? And you said it, that I'm treating myself. So, like, I don't know about you, but I never thought for that day, oh, I might get on it tonight. I never didn't get on it. I always did. Yeah, you always did. Always did. And I thought I made that decision. That decision was made for me. That It was made for me. And I always think about it. But, like, if a day ends in why I'm using, if I had a good day, oh, I've had a good day today. Let's have a little blowout. Oh, I've had a shit day today. Oh, fuck, I don't really I need a blowout. Blow. Yeah. I need a blowout. So, and, and, and it's, and, and, there's that, for me, there's a real darkness and a real sadness mm. inside of me that made me want to use. And then the stuff had happened and I'd done things that I couldn't live with. Oh, and, and, yeah. and, 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 and and the drink of drugs took that away from me. And that's why I say to you, it ain't about to drink drugs. That was just my solution. Mm. You know, and, and then, I, you know, I've done a lot of trauma therapy. I've done a lot, of, and I do a lot of like group therapy and I do all that stuff. And, I, and, and the more that stuff I do now, the better I feel. Like um, like my mum was always saying to me, oh, you know, do you need to go to their meetings? I love it. I, f I love it. I love talking about addiction. I love helping people. Mm. I love, you know, this is this gives yeah. me that buzz. Because I'm like you, Dan. I'm a buzz person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I want to feel good. And, and and so this gives me that buzz that I need. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same, man. And I feel like in a selfish way, it may be from an, uh, the addict, addict inside me um, doing this good stuff. I need it. I need it, you know. It's it, it's it, it, it makes me feel like. Uh, and listen, this is great advice, I think, for anyone that's out there that's struggling. If you're if you're deep in addiction at the moment, or you know you're struggling to pull yourself out of whatever shit you're going through, um, you know, if you've attempted suicide, if you know whatever, right? Look at it this way: you've got a brilliant, brilliant log backlog of knowledge now to help other people with what you've been through yeah. and I think that's great you know that's something you can take you can take all of your pain you can you can take it all and you can lay it all out on the table and go do you know what mate I'm just like you and I decided to move on which I think is powerful yeah because I mean we don't really know each other yeah you know we've spoken but we've got something in common haven't we yeah but as soon as, but as, soon as we you know, we're here today and, and we're fighting to chat because it's yeah. like, put it, you know yeah. what I mean? And then I'm saying, oh, I've done this and you're going, I can see your little face going, oh, fucking hell, I did that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's that, it's that like one addict talking to another. Mm. Like, um, it's hard to hear that I'm an addict. It's hard, man. Yeah, I mean, look, maybe you ain't an addict. Yeah. Maybe you ain't, I don't know. You know, who, am I an addict? Yeah. Who decided that? Me. You know what I mean? And I'm fine with that. I'm grateful. I for like that. I like to say, and I think maybe, I think maybe that's a tough thing for people out there watching as well. Um, we, We'll have to wrap this up soon, won't we, John, mate, because we've just gone over one. Yeah, we've got about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, cool. But um, yeah, I think um, I think that's another big thing as well. Like sometimes a massive thing about especially drinking is, you know, when you say, oh, I don't drink, people go, why? You know, what's wrong with you? It's actually fucking, and it's the only drug only drug in this in this world where people think you're strange if you don't fucking take it. Yeah, um, bullshit. It's bullshit, yeah. And, and I think that a massive part of lads not wanting to stop or give, giving up is one fear of missing out on the fun. Um, but I look at that now. That, that was a big one for me that I had to get over, the fear of missing out. But now, with my clarity, I look at it, instead of fear of missing out, it's freedom. You know, I spoke to I spoke to a couple of my mates. I don't know if they're going to listen to this podcast. If they are, apolog apologies to you. But, you know, I asked them what they've been up to when they last saw each other. Oh, one of my mates went, yeah, we went down to working man's club to watch the England match. And that shut about 11. So we sat on the park bench, fucking just finished our packet there till like yeah. three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I thought to myself, fucking hell. 
Like, you same age as me, couple of grown lads sat on the park bench sniffing fucking gear, chatting shit. Yeah. What was that walk home like? What did you do for the rest of the night? Wank yourself silly till the morning yeah. and then fucking f have flashbacks about everything you'd done last night. I was like, man, I don't miss that. But it happened all around the country. That weren't just your mates. That was thousands and thousands of blokes in the country. Yeah. Sad, didn't it? And it, I, I was in the pub and I, and I walked in the toilet and there was a bit, of, bit of gear on the side and I just, 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 just walk out. Do you know what I mean? I'm just mm. like, it's mad, mate. It's mad that we can get clean and we can do this stuff. Like, it's mad that, that I'm, you know, like we should talk about being an addict. Like, for me, I tried loads of ways of getting mm. clean and, I, and you know, for me, I, I had to know that I could never drink or use again. You know, will I never drink or use again? I hope not. I fucking hope not. You know, mm. will I? Well, I, I don't know. You know, but can I not use today? I can do today, and that's what I think about. It. Just yeah, don't, I mean, don't yeah, I, it. and that's what I think. Instead of instead of looking at yourself as an addict, maybe look at try and look at yourself. I'm just talking to people out there that are, that were doing what I was doing, um, which was like, you know, sessions at the weekend or but, events and stuff. Maybe 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 a, maybe a better way to look at it so it's not so daunting stopping is to look at it like you've just got an unhealthy relationship with alcohol and drugs like i have so why torture yourself with it yeah yeah and like so like you spoke about all the things that you got from when you got clean like so i, I always thought i was missing out missing out on everything i didn't do nothing before anyway i didn't do anything you know mm. i mean i you, you know I just just thought about using when I'm not using. Mm. I'm thinking about using, and and I and I fucking hate everyone, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite aggy and aggressive. So I realise that's mm. fear, and I've driven by that, and I didn't realise that. I'm just scared of everything. Do you know what I mean? So I, my dad said to me, "Oh, like we tried to speak to you, but we couldn't. Like I'd be so aggressive and angry with people. It's just fear. Yeah, you don't want to hear you know it. I mean, and I'm not that person. Yeah, and I'm not that person. Mm. And since I got clean, like you know, I started my own business. I've done. I've run events all over the world. I've been in meetings all over the world. Mm. I'm starting another business next year. Mm. Um, you know, I do I help people. I do that every single day. You know, and, yeah. and that gives you that self esteem, that good, that good feel good feeling. It makes me feel better. Yeah, you know, and because I, 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 I can share. Yeah, and I talk to addicts every single day. You know, I've, I've um, you know, I got married. I've, I've done my stag do, clean and sober. I went away. Everyone I can do that. Use, you know, but like, and I, it was that was quite early on for me, and everyone was a bit worried. But I was like, if I'm going to use, it wouldn't be there with you. Lot, you know, I'd be away on my own, yeah. doing my own thing. But I just try and keep it a day at a time. I hope, I hope, I, John, you'll have to let me know on this. I hope this isn't too preachy from us. Do you know what I mean? What do you think? I think like, I think like, I didn't want this to be, I mean, I'm really enjoying talking to you. And I, like, I, when I look at how, so, how long you've been sober and how positive you feel about it, yeah. it gives me hope. And I look, I look at you and I, you know, because my mind is constantly playing tricks on me at the moment. Yeah. Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Am I doing the right thing? And at the moment, it feels very positive and talking to you helps me. And I hope that people that listen to this that haven't got a problem with, um, drinking drugs aren't like oh fucking hell like leave off what are you going on about fucking I only like having a couple of beers and the people that have that's why it's such a tricky podcast for me because the people that have got an issue with drinking drugs it might be too painful for them to listen to so no one might fucking listen to the thing but I just want to I, I, just before we finish up I just want to finish by sort of saying like the my moments of happiness that I get from this this sobriety my moments of those small moments of real happiness um, which are like c c clear mornings with my kids, you know, taking them swimming on a Saturday morning, which if I'd been out was never fucking happening because of the fear and the fucking stress and I just can't be bothered, you know, hung over or whatever, might not have even fucking slept. Taking them swimming on a Saturday morning, walking around with two girls full of energy and I'm also full of energy instead of two girls full of energy and I'm like, shut the fuck up, man. You know, because that's what we're like. I'm sorry. I hate to say it, but that's what you're like. When you're hungover, you're like, fuck this. You don't realise how lucky you are yeah. to have them two girls at that age. Fucking, I'm just talking from my own experience, two baby girls. that They're going to they're gonna grow up so quick. I know it. So to be present there, that moment of happiness is great. And also my missus wandering into the kitchen and I can see her looking at me. Well, I might just be doing something like pottering around or doing something. And it's like a time when I'd normally be out. And I can see, and she's just said to me the other day, I'm really happy at the moment. And I thought, when was the fucking last time I heard her say that? In, I mean, I've, she's got a beautiful house and everything like that. So on paper, she's happy. But yeah, really? It's not about that stuff. No. and about uh, the things you said with your kids. Yeah. And her just and saying, her. her saying that to me, you know, you get that little thing like, this is right. This feels right. It doesn't feel wrong. So. Yeah. There were two things. Like one, it's going to get better. That's a fact. It's going to get better. What you're doing, stuff will happen and you'll go, fucking hell, like that's happened. Like it does get better. Um, oh fuck, I was going to say something else. I completely forgot. Can we cut this out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's staying in, man, because I don't want to look like the only fucking lunatic here. It's staying um, here. But yeah, it gets better and it gets better. Yeah, right. So this is what we're going to say, right? So you spoke about your, your, 
about Shelley saying, oh, I'm in a good place at the moment. When we get well, our families get well. And that's what's happening is you, your wow. effect of what you're doing is rubbing off on people. So yeah, people might think it's preaching all that. I, I don't give a shit to be honest with you. Like, I'm just telling you my story. This is what I do to get clean. Mm. If you can relate to it, if you've got a problem, drop me a message. I can help you. That's a fact. Wow. If you're struggling. You don't have to drink and use every single day. You might just want people ring all the time. Oh, I'm only using once a week. I said, well, that's fine. That's easy to stop then. But if this is having a problem in your life, like you say, then mm. there may be something you need to have a look at. But when we get mm. well, our families get well. And it rubs yeah. off. It rubs off. Yeah. Us. And uh, look, the way, I'm, the way that I, the way that I justify doing this in my mind is I spend all week on my social media making people laugh with my comedy. Um, this is something that I'm doing for me. And this is this is something that I'm doing for people out there that truly are struggling. And if it, if it, if it does connect with them, then what a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. And if um, if anyone is struggling, they wanted to drop me a line. Um, Where can they find you? It's just on uh, DJ Ross Mack is my Instagram. So drop me a message on then. Um, I've got friends all around the country. So if they want to get into some local meetings, some Brilliant. 12 step meetings, like, um, you know, I've, I've done therapy, I've done all that stuff as well. But the meetings are free. So I'll turn up to me and I, you know, I'd, I had the car and I had the house and all that. I'd fuck all. Do you know what I mean? I'd nothing, you know, because I'd, but uh, on the outside, it, you know, I had the wash and all that and it looked like I had everything, but I had nothing, you know. And from getting clean, I've now got all that stuff and more. You know, we talk mm. about life beyond the wildest dreams, but today I'm just, I'm just grateful inside. You know, I had a hole in my side, in my, in my, in me that I couldn't fill, mm. and I've sort of filled that today with recovery. But drop me a message on Instagram, and I, I can link you up with people around the country. So yeah. I've got friends all around the country. I'll link you, and they'll get you to meetings. It, it might not be for you, do you know what I mean? But, but I say give it a yeah. go, do you know what I mean? Because what you're doing, if you listen to this podcast, and you're thinking I'll do that, like your mates on the park bench. How many people have done that, man? If you try something different, yeah, I just say give it a go, give it a proper go. Yeah, man, you'll get addicted to the happiness, man, and the positive. Game changer. It is. And plus you look sexy, so you get more shags as well off the missus. I'm just putting that out there. I hope <laughs> she don't watch this, but uh it does, she does. She, you know what I mean? You get you get a bit more action. Anyway, on that note, Ross, thank you very much. Well, listen, we're out here changing lives. Come and join the group, men and their emotions. Uh I'm gonna make you a moderator on that soon. You can yeah, you can you can join in men and their emotions. Uh Ross, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you very Certainly. much. And uh let me just sign out by saying uh if you stayed with us and listened to that thank you very much um and men and their emotions come on come on there and you'll see whatever it is you're going through in life there'll be someone in there going through a similar thing if not worse or has dealt with it or whatever just come on there and see that you're not alone we're all a bunch of fucking lunatic nutcases and uh, we're in it together but Man, we're on the right path. We're getting well. We're getting better. We're staying positive and uh, we're looking sexy and we're getting shagged. Well, I am. If you're going through a tough time at the moment, please don't suffer in silence. Feel free to pick up the phone and contact any of these helplines. I personally, myself, at one of my darkest points, contacted the Samaritans and it completely changed my outlook and got me out of a really deep, dark place. A problem shared really is a problem halved. So if you don't feel confident talking to those around you, check out any of these organizations and give them a call. This is my Facebook group. Just simply search on Facebook, Men and Their Emotions. It's for men only, uh, but once you're in there, you can talk anonymously about your problems and help others and just feel a little bit of community. So come join the conversation, Men and Their Emotions, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Menace of sobriety. Just a minute, just, just a minute.